Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Oblivion Being Played Badly. In my last episode, I was running away from Bruma in shame, having discovered that I, uh, I wasn't wearing any trousers. And I did apologise. And nobody's chased me, so I think I'm okay. Hello, God. What is it, citizen? Can I help you? Emperors have been assassinated before, but this time, I don't know. It's different. Can't you feel it? A shadow has fallen across all of Tamriel. Hmm. It's not quite a nice day to me, but... Move mind. along. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did also have a bit of a sleep. And I am no longer in the dark. Well, at least not from a day-night point of view. I also discovered that none of my mushrooms can be mixed together. But I did some cooking, so that made me feel better. Now we're currently heading to a place called Coral, although it looks for the world like Choral, and I shall continue to call it Choral until I am corrected by a member of the public. The road is windy and long, and I have absolutely no idea where I'm going at all. These flowers. They're a bit uniform and a bit strange. I get the impression that strange is not unusual around here. Why am I going back on myself? Excuse me while I check my map. Oh, I see. It's just a particularly windy road. Never mind. Oh, Wayne Priory. And some bloke gave me some shiny amulet thing and I'm sure he told me to take it there and I said that I wouldn't because I liked the shiny amulet thing and I'd actually be wanting it off him for the entire introduction and he'd finally given it to me so it's not going anywhere. However, as I appear to be passing the place on the way, I might just have a little chat with them. Do a bit of negotiating and say, well, I'll swap this shiny amulet for preferably another shiny amulet. And if you've run out of shiny amulets, or maybe there is only one shiny amulet... Then I'll exchange it for something else. Perhaps a million gold pieces. Perhaps some mushrooms I can actually mix together. Or maybe a better sword. As you took two better swords off me earlier in the game. Red mushrooms? <gasps> Red mushrooms. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I bet they do something. They must do something. They better do something. Red mushroom mixes with... <gasps> Red mushroom mixes with white mushroom! Restore agility one point for six seconds on self. I get the impression that's probably not going to be terribly helpful in the grand scheme of things. I think I might save my mushrooms for later. Meanwhile, guess what? <coughs> Ow! I have been having some significant problems with the local wildlife. But as I get 10 gold pieces every time I have that problem, I'm not really too worried about it. Now, we have a problem here. That looks like the road. And that looks like the road. And that looks like some flowers. Let's pick them. Mmm, pretty. Oh, orange flower. Orange flower. Oh, it's yellow. No, oh, whatever it is. I can feel ten gold pieces coming my way. Oh, there it is. Um, yes. Okay. I choose not to comment on that. There were too many inappropriate things that I could say. I'm not going to say them. I'm above that. Oh, 
<gasps> Don't make me come after you. Don't make me poison my sword and come after you. <laughs> Hello. I wasn't talking about poisoning swords and coming after anybody. Oh, yes, right. I don't really want you to listen to me. Oh, thanks. Guards on drugs. Never mind, eh? Useless red mushrooms. This looks promising. I can see something. Let's go up the hill. Now, I'm hoping that I've got some trousers on, because otherwise the people of Coral are going to run me out of town as well, and it's going to get really embarrassing and quite awkward, because I'm not going to be able to do any of the major skill recommendations. Just apologise. Just breaking the fourth wall here. I must apologise for the frame rate. Not quite sure what's going on. This looks suspiciously like a priory to me. <sighs> oh, go on then. It's better than roots and mages' guilds that don't like me anyway. Hello. I'm the shepherd here. Eranor's the name, and this is Waynon Priory. If he's not sleeping or eating, he'll be fussing with his books, I reckon, over in the priory house. I'd rather be sleeping and or eating, to be honest. Be seeing you. I know it's not right to steal. It's not right to steal from a, from a monastery. I know that. I know that. Doesn't mean I don't do it, though. Hello? Is there anybody in? Because if there isn't, I'm going to knit your stuff. Aha. I'm Brother Joffrey. What do you want? Well, it's more what I don't want because I've brought you the Amulet of Kings, but to be honest, I want to keep it for myself. Well, this cannot be. Well, it is, No one but want the it. Emperor is permitted to handle the Amulet. Let me see it. No, because you're not permitted to handle it either. <sighs> By the Nine, this is the Amulet of Kings. But what did you think? I was Who lying? Who are you? How did you get this? What do you know of the Emperor's death? Um, I don't really want to talk about how close I was to the Emperor's death, to be honest. As unlikely as your story sounds, I believe you. Only the strange destiny of Uriel Septim could have brought you to me carrying the Amulet of Kings. I think it's my strange destiny, to be honest. His meaning is unclear to me as well. The Emperor seemed to perceive some threat from the demonic world of Oblivion. The Prince of Destruction, Merun's Dagon, is one of the Lords of Oblivion. But the mortal world is protected from the Daedra of Oblivion by magical barriers. That's handy. I'm not sure. Only the Emperors truly understand the meaning behind the rituals of coronation. The Amulet of Kings is ancient. Saint Alicia herself received it from the gods. It is a holy relic of great power. I'm not giving it to you. When an Emperor is crowned, he uses the Amulet to light the dragon fires at the Temple of the One in the Imperial City. With the Emperor dead and no new heir crowned, the dragon fires in the Temple will be dark for the first time in centuries. It may be that the dragon fires protected us from a threat that only the Emperor was aware of. I am one of the few who know of his existence. Many years ago, I served as captain of Uriel's bodyguards, the Blades. One night, Uriel called me into his private chambers. A baby boy lay sleeping in a basket. Uriel told me to deliver him somewhere safe. He never told me anything else about the baby, but I knew it was his son. From time to time he would ask about the child's progress. Now it seems that this illegitimate son is the heir to the Septim throne, if he yet lives. Well, there's a story I didn't really want to hear. His name is Martin. He serves Akatosh in the chapel in the city of Kvac, south of here. You must go to Kvac and find him at once. If the enemy is aware of his existence, as seems likely, he is in terrible danger. And please, let me know if there's anything you need. My resources here are limited, but I will help in any way I can. I need some bread, actually. Do you like garlic bread? Because I need some bread. I keep a few things here in my chest to resupply travelling blades. 
and help yourself to whatever you need. Fantastic. We've got a microwave. Well, this is very exciting. Come back next time to find out just what assistance I'm being given and what is in that chest. Excitement abounds!